Good morning, welcome back to Southern Michigan. My name's Adrienne. We've got an intermission between storms this morning. Let's take a walk through this beautiful garden. We've got a couple monarch caterpillars on the milkweed. I knew the storms were coming today, so I didn't prune everything like I normally would for a garden tour. These purple potted pole beans are amazing on an arched trellis. My Aristotle basil looking cute as ever. This Paul Ropes and tomato is doing okay back here. I was a little worried about its sun exposure being behind this bean trellis, but it's doing okay. This is a sun gold cherry tomato. Some calendula. Got a variety of herbs scattered through the, throughout this bed. My ping tongue eggplant is looking pretty rough and my purple pepper is as well. I'm really struggling with my peppers this year. Here's a better boy tomato. Some thyme and oregano. And there's some dill back there with some sweet peppers. A little bit of parsley that's going to seed. My raspberry bush would probably enjoy a little bit of support at this point, but it's doing well. I've got some muncher cucumbers back here that have been pretty stagnant in their growth progress. This area of my garden is just very sandy and dry. They are growing very, very slowly. So we'll see how that turns out. This ground cherry, however, is doing really good. And it's even got some fruit set. This volunteer cherry tomato is doing well. These are two Sapola tomatoes, which is a Roma style tomato. got some good sized fruit on here. Here's a poblano pepper. This little patch of peppers is really struggling and has been struggling pretty much since the beginning. I'm getting ready to make some hard decisions now that the fall planting season is upon us. I'm going to be pulling out plants that even though they're producing they're not thriving. If I'm not going to get a decent harvest off of some of this stuff, I'd rather pull it out and give something else a chance. The season did not start out very strong for my peppers. I had terrible germination rates with my own seeds. Picked up three flats from a local greenhouse and they ended up being mislabeled. So I, what I thought was three flats of sweet peppers turned out to be a variety of sweet peppers plus some hot peppers and banana peppers, which is fine. We will put them to good use. And even though we don't enjoy hot, hot peppers, we have friends and family that we can share those with but it was a sad discovery to realize that that had happened. And now that I'm battling major beetle damage on some of these plants and the fungus from the humidity and heat is starting to set in, I don't know what our pepper harvest is gonna end up being. I'm pretty sure this is a Dr. Wyke's yellow slicer. I had really good notes initially when I transplanted all of these plants out in early spring. I lost a few plants to cutworms and when I replaced them with new plants, 
I didn't do a great job of keeping track of what I put where. So some of these plants are a mystery to me until they start setting fruit or start ripening. This is a Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson tomatoes are a deep red slicer that keeps a little bit of this green shoulder. This variety has a very strong following and people love this tomato. It has a little bit of a smoky flavor, very unique and very delicious. This is another pork chop. It's a Brad Gates variety, big yellow slicer tomato. I really love yellow tomatoes. This Italian paste is loaded up with some really good sized tomatoes. This is a, another one of those super sweets. And this plant had me stumped for a little bit early in the season because I've never grown it before, so I had no idea what the growth habit was. It has a very unique growth habit. The fruiting branches start out as just a single branch with pretty good size cherry tomatoes, almost saladette size. It forks out into these clusters of tomatoes. And I'm just blown away by the amount of blossoms it's setting. This is a Better Boy tomato. One of my blueberries cherry tomatoes. Oh, that one's split or something's going on with that one. So we'll get rid of that. These are a red cherry tomato with purple shoulders. Everywhere the sun touches on these tomatoes, it will turn purple or blue. It's such a fun plant to grow. And it's usually extremely healthy and very easy to care for. Next to it is a sun gold, an Italian paste, and look at the size of that tomato. And this row finishes off with four cordoboos, which is another ox heart paste tomato. It was my favorite paste tomato last year. I only had a, I think maybe one plant and I've got several in the garden this year. This is a beefsteak variety. I just pulled one out yesterday that was pretty diseased and probably not going to thrive. Here's a Granny Cantrell. A Better Boy. This one is a Cordoboo. Another better boy. Three jet stars with a mortgage lifter in the middle of them. And this amazing triple crop Look at all of those tomatoes. This is my first year growing triple crops and I'm pretty pleased with its production so far. My cucamelons are taking off and quickly climbing their way up this little gate and beyond. It's grabbing hold of the sunflower up here. These teddy bear sunflowers are pushing through despite some pretty heavy beetle damage. 
my wild time in the bike basket is pretty wild. And I just noticed some droppings on this teddy bear sunflower. So we have more than just beetles enjoying these plants. So I'm going to have to find the culprit. But this is why you want to walk through your garden and look at all of your plants often because you're going to notice little things like this. These droppings are really small, which means whatever is eating this plant is very small right now. But within a day or so, whatever caterpillar is on here could be huge and literally take out a plant overnight. This is my garlic bed. We harvested all of the garlic a few weeks ago and just yesterday I started planting another round of potatoes here. My nasturtiums are still beautiful but definitely have seen better days. Purple ball basil looking amazing as ever and this little strawberry runner. Can you even believe how much it's taken off? There is something living in my garden. Did you hear that? It's living in the straw. Henry, did you hear that? I love the lazy gardening of the Ruth Stout method, but having piles and piles of straw in my garden has invited a fair amount of unwanted guests. This trellis is loaded up with eight paste tomato plants. I started this with four Italian paste tomatoes and look at the size of these tomatoes. I'm so impressed with both of these varieties. I have Italian paste and cordobus. And the size of these tomatoes is so impressive. Look at that. It seems to be that the Italian paste are consistently very large tomatoes, whereas the Cordobu plants do have their fair share of super large tomatoes for sure. They also have um, some smaller ones. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about. This one isn't as large as some, but it's already blushing, so it's not going to get any bigger than that. This is a patty pan summer squash starting to set some blossoms. I've pulled some of the onions out of this bed and quite a few more are ready. This is my first year growing onions and although they are not huge bulbs, they're a good enough, good enough size for us and I've learned a lot growing them this year and next year I hope to have an even better harvest. But I'm very pleased with what we've got so far. My tomatillo plants are doing really good. I've already harvested a good handful of them. And look at how this silver leaf sunflower is reaching out into the tomatillo area with all of these spectacular, beautiful branches. Got a little strawberry patch happening here. And next to the tomatillos is another blueberries cherry tomato. Beautiful little tomatoes and a sun gold. 
got a volunteer sunflower. And a wild Dr. Wyke's tomato. Because this is the only tomato plant at the end of this row, I didn't prune it very much. I just kind of am letting it go. I've pruned up the bottom branches some just to mitigate some of that splashback. But I'm kind of letting it go wild. And it's doing really great. It's very happy here. This is a ping tongue eggplant, a black beauty eggplant. And a mystery pepper with some ground cherries. I had a lot of ground cherries volunteer this year, which I intentionally planned for. I let a lot of fruits drop in this bed last season, hoping that I would have a very nice patch of ground cherries in this end of the bed, and it has turned out beautiful. Ground cherries are grown in a little husk like tomatillos, but they're a very sweet, small, tomato-type fruit, and we just love eating them fresh off of the plant, but people do make desserts with them. I'm really happy with how this little semi-raised bed is turning out. I love the color of those marigolds and I love how the ground cherries have filled in their space. I've got some peppers that are doing really well. And this year I've set the groundwork for this bed being full of perennial plants. I started some echinacea this year. There are six echinacea plants in this area. And I've also planted several all-star strawberries that are already shooting out runners. My plan is to have all-star strawberries, then a little patch of this echinacea, more all-star strawberries, and then the ground cherries. This is one of several cilantro plants that I let go to seed, and cilantro seed is just coriander. So you can harvest the seeds to use for culinary uses and you can replant the seeds for more cilantro and I'm going to have enough to do both. When the seeds start forming they're really green and as they mature they start to turn brown and then when they're ready to harvest they'll be a very dry looking seed like these there's a few right here that are really close this is a sapola tomato and here's some more of those alster strawberries this is a paul robeson tomato and some more peppers doing really good. Some parsley along the edge. And my purple sage that was a delicious, tasty snack for the beetles is coming back. And I hope it recovers because that was one of my favorites this year. The calendula all over my garden is doing amazing and I'm harvesting the blooms daily and I'm also letting a few of the blossoms go to seed to save for next year so this will dry out completely and turn brown and that's when you know the seeds are ready to harvest 
these two rows of peppers were supposed to be mostly sweet peppers and I do have a fair amount of sweet peppers but mixed in with that I have some banana peppers that were a complete surprise because of the mix-up with the greenhouse but we'll put them to good use this is where my Kennebec potatoes were planted and it will soon be full of fall plants. I have cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower started inside. More of that strawberry blonde calendula, which really is my favorite variety of calendula. It's so pretty. It reminds me of pink lemonade. My line of purple opal basil has obviously seen better days. It was really heavily damaged by the beetles. And I had a volunteer petunia sprout up, which is just so odd because I didn't have that growing here last year. And it just now popped out of the soil. My Brussels sprouts, unfortunately, have succumbed to some cabbage worm damage. And I didn't notice it right away, but I've since treated it with some BT and hopefully it will survive. I still have some curly scotch kale in here and then some more Brussels sprouts down here on the end. And one of these plants is pretty heavily damaged. This bed has a lot going on. I've got some pepper plants in here, some cabbage finishing up, three tomato plants. This is a Dr. White's tomato, and this little section just right here, these four cabbage plants and this Dr. White's tomato gets considerable amount of shade from the bean arch. And this Dr. White's tomato is a little stunted due to that shade. This pork chop tomato is doing great, and this Paul Robeson is also doing well. This is a Cordoboo cabbage. It's a early Jersey cabbage, like an ox heart shaped head. My giant marigolds are taking their time, but coming along nicely. I've got a couple of those plants just outside the garden that are starting to bloom and they'll get about four feet tall. They're pretty spectacular. This is another Cordoboo paste tomato, a sapola, and then some more beautiful cabbage. These pepper plants are doing pretty good. I have some Tabasco, some jalapeno, a poblano, actually three poblanos. My little patch of basil is recovering very nicely from the beetle damage. A cayenne pepper. Oh, and that one's, that one's dead. This is impressive to me because last year I had one cayenne pepper. And look at how good I'm doing. I already have five. I am loving these jazzy zinnias. It's a miniature zinnia. And they are so cute and blooming everywhere. Got some more strawberry blonde calendula tucked in underneath these sunflowers. And the double click cosmos back here are doing so great. This expansion has exceeded my expectations. And I don't know why I'm surprised. This area was just lawn last year. We put the chickens on here for a few months and then covered the entire area with leaf mulch and just let it fester for the winter. Everything is doing so good in this expansion. This corner is full of jazzy zinnias and a Ron Denise cue ball summer squash. My Armenian long cucumbers are doing fantastic. This is my favorite cucumber to grow. It's the most healthy cucumber plant that I've ever had in my garden. I don't experience a lot of powder, 
powdery mildew with it. No matter what size you harvest these cucumbers, they taste amazing, even if they get really big. It's actually a melon that we eat as a cucumber, and this is just two plants. It is just loaded with cucumbers. Opposite the Armenian long cucumber is this green finger cucumber variety, and I honestly almost pulled it out. I've got two plants here, and most of the lower leaves were covered in powdery mildew already, which is pretty typical of cucumbers in my garden, which is why I really love growing the Armenian long, because I don't experience that as much with that plant. But ever since I cut all of those powdery mildew leaves off, this plant has really turned a corner and it's doing really well. It's looking very healthy and I'm really excited. My patty pan summer squash has set some squash babies and these plants are looking really good. My celery is still doing great and I sowed some carrots back here along the strip tape on both sides of this path. I've got some burgundy okra coming along nicely. Another ground cherry. When those volunteer ground cherries popped up in that bed, I pulled a few of the little plants out and scattered them around the garden. Look at this Desi squash. It is amazing and quickly becoming my favorite summer squash variety. It just does so well in my garden. It has a ton of blossoms. We've been harvesting squash from these two plants daily and they're just so healthy. I love growing the cue ball zucchini because I'm the only one that likes summer squash. My three tomato plants are doing well back here. This is a Sun Gold, a Paul Robeson, and a Cordoboo. I've got three Pro Cut sunflowers coming on right here. Some Holy Basil. More of those beautiful jazzy zinnias a little Alaskan salmon nasturtium, and three Thornburg's terracotta tomato plants. And these are a semi-determinate variety, very unusual looking tomato. They're an orange terracotta color, and they have green gel and flesh. Greenish. It's not totally green. But they're setting a lot of really beautiful tomatoes. All of the flowers I have in my garden make me so happy. Here's some cosmos behind the Armenian long cucumbers. My snapdragons still looking beautiful, but they're on their way out. Some more of that beautiful nasturtium. And the Rondini squash are doing so great. This is exactly what I'd hoped would happen here, that the zinnias would be poking through these beautiful large squash leaves. These, were, these Rondini squash plants were kind of slow to get going, and they looked a little lanky and gnarly for a while and then all of a sudden they just came into their own and they're doing so good. Back here I have some poblano peppers and some purple opal basil. It's just doing really good. These opal basils back here dodged any of that beetle damage I saw in the original side of the garden. And these poblano peppers are doing fantastic. So you win some, you lose some. I'm losing some peppers to that fungus, but then I have some plants that are just doing amazing. 
And that's pretty much gardening in a nutshell, I've learned. I've got a line of celery back here. And this teepee trellis is filling out so quickly. This is a Parisian pickling cucumber. We're pulling cucumbers off of this daily. I've already made some bread and butter pickles, which is my pickle of choice. And it's starting to do some battles with the purple potted pole beans that are coming up on the other side of this teepee. This is a muncher cucumber that's coming on and starting to set some blossoms. This Yeti nasturtium is wild and beautiful. I have some globo onions that I started from seed down the center of both of these teepees. And the purple potted pole beans on this teepee trellis have fought their way to live. Their will to live is impressive. They were munched down by a rabbit early in the season. I re-sewed this line and they were munched again, but they're thriving and setting some blossoms. My winter squash teepee is so beautiful. I love this teepee. I love what's happening here. I've got De La Cata on the other side. This side is Buttercup. I've got a ton of squash coming on between these two, these two sides. I have four plants on each side. All of my melons are doing great. I've got a little patch of melons over here and another one on the other side. I have three varieties of melons growing in my garden. Sugar baby watermelon, midget melon, which is a personal size cantaloupe, and these moon and stars watermelon. And they're so cool because the leaves and the melons have this beautiful yellow spotted pattern. I've got another little baby starting here. I've got some white knight and plum pro cut sunflowers over here. And this is a patch of my favorite sunflower, that silver leaf sunflower, just branching out and going wild. So pretty. Behind those is a patch of mammoth sunflowers. They're towering over the arch trellises now. My teddy bear sunflowers are doing so well. They are so pretty. I'm definitely planting more of these for fall. My honey nut winter squash is climbing up this trellis and it's just so darling. It's a baby butternut variety. My Chinese red noodle beans are taking off and filling this side of the trellis nicely. It's starting to set blossoms. And this is really interesting. These are seeds that I saved from my garden last year and it's setting green noodle beans and I didn't grow green noodle beans. I grew red noodle beans. So I wonder if I'm going to get a mix of red and green noodle beans. Very strange, but I'll take it. I love these Chinese red noodle beans sauteed and they freeze well too. After all of this rain comes through and these beds dry out a little bit, I'm gonna be harvesting all of these German butterball potatoes. I have two beds back here 
and the plants are looking pretty rough at this point. I did pull a few just to see how the potatoes were forming and they're a decent size. I don't want to let it go much longer just because there's some disease setting in and I don't want it to affect the potatoes so I'm going to get them out of here. Everything in my containers over here are doing great. This is a blueberries, cherry tomato, some chocolate mint, a regular zucchini that was toppled over from the wind we had the other day. So I gave him some support and he's tethered to the trellis over here on this blueberries, cherry tomato. Swiss chard is loving life in this container. A better boy tomato. My green stock beans are as wild as ever. These dragon tongue bush beans. I had originally thought I had originally thought the Kalima beans were up here on this top tier and the dragon tongue bush beans were down on this lower tier but I've got the dragon tongue bush beans up here actually and they're a very interesting beautiful bean and I like this bean it has really good flavor it's not fuzzy or waxy the beans are doing fantastic everything else is getting a little bit too much shade and the plants that are struggling to get more sun are getting really leggy. This is an Aristotle basil and normally it has a small ball shaped grow growth habit and as you can see it is not a small ball. It is leggy and reaching for the sun. I have some hot peppers planted down here and you know they are kind of vining out to reach for the sun this is another one right here coming through the green beans so it may work out fine now that these plants have reached out and found their place in the world but I'm definitely rethinking how I'm going to plant this for next summer and I may end up just putting all bush beans in here. As soon as these plants start to die back and wrap up production, I'm gonna pull them and replace a lot of this green stock with lettuce for the fall season. This sun gold tomato plant is wild and unruly which pretty much sums up the entire container garden corner back here. This is an orange mint plant. I've got peppermint and spearmint in a pot back here behind these tomatoes. This is another blueberries cherry. Cherry tomatoes do really well in containers, so I've got mostly small cherry tomatoes in these. Here's an atomic grape, which is a beautiful tomato. This is a really unusual variety. It's a wild boar farms variety and it produces various sizes of tomatoes from small grape size to a larger grape shaped like saladette size and the colors are magnificent. It's going to be streaked with oranges, reds, greens, and purple. I've got a couple more sun golds mixed in here. This one might be an Amish paste. I feel like I planted one Amish paste back here somewhere. And it could be this because the blossoms are a little bit bigger than cherry tomatoes. This is a strawberry blonde calendula with a couple of struggling orange peppers, a dwarf tomato called orange hat, some oregano, thyme, rosemary, strawberry mint. This 
black beauty eggplant is doing so good in this container that I am probably going to grow my eggplants exclusively in containers from now on. These are some garlic chives and I have three winter squash plants sown in the ground back here and they are doing a fantastic job covering the ground. I have sugar pie pumpkins, butternut squash, and this one with this awesome leaf pattern is a seminal pumpkin, but it took so long to get going. I'm pretty sure we're not going to see any fruit from that, but we might have some really beautiful foliage. This is a sweetheart cherry tomato. A sapola, which is that Roma style, gnarly wild looking plant. And it's got a really good size tomato on it. That's the biggest Roma I've ever seen. In with the sapola, I have some basil some parsley and a few bunching onions, a pot of dill, and this is a pot of three really sad looking jalapeno peppers that I'm pretty confident I'm going to have to pull out of here. Well the rain has arrived just in time. I'm so glad we were able to get through the entire garden before it really started to storm. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me walking through my garden. I'm having so much fun sharing this growing season with you and there's so much more to come. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any updates. I hope you're having a fantastic summer and I look forward to seeing you again soon.